We first saw enhanced for loops when we were working with the AP image and the pixel classes. Um, but it turns out we can use them with arrays too, so let's talk about them today. Most of the time that we're looping with arrays, we follow a set of pretty common patterns. Uh, you know, we're going to visit every element from the first position to the last one, or we're going to visit every element until we find a particular element, for instance. Um, we're going to use an index variable, which we're going to initialize to the very first position, and then every time we're going to test the index to make sure it's less than the last position in order for us to continue. We're also going to increment that counter, whatever that index position is, every time we pass through the loop. So recent versions of Java include the enhanced for loop, which basically frees us from having to manage all of these little details, like the counter. The general form is a lot simpler than a regular for loop. You can see what it looks like here. Uh, we have some temp variable declaration for whatever the current element will be, and then we're going to have our array object. The type of that temporary variable has to be compatible with the type of the array. As an example, suppose we had some string array called names. Well, I could iterate through that entire array saying, okay, call the current element this name, and then I could treat that element before moving on to the next one. If you want to see how much that simplifies the code, I mean, just compare it to this alternative. Compare it to the regular for loop version of that code, uh, which is uh, futzing around with all the index and the condition and the increment and all of that. This is way simpler. Let's see how exactly it would work with an example of a one-dimensional array, which, we, which we've talked about, and a two-dimensional array, which we'll officially treat a little bit later. I mean, here we can see we've got an array uh, ABC, which has two, three, and four in it. It's an array of ints, and we want to sum the elements. Uh, well, doing that with an enhanced for loop is really easy. All we have to say is call each uh, element in ABC element. It's going to be of type int, and just add that to our running variable sum. Finally, we can print it out. Uh, with the two-dimensional array, uh, we'll see in the future that we can think of a two-dimensional array as sort of an array of arrays. So uh, we'll have one enhanced for loop iterating through the rows, getting a single row for us, and then we'll use another enhanced for loop to iterate through each row, calling each individual element in that row element. We'll add each one to a sum, and uh, then we can print it out just the same. Just again, the key thing to note, every time we pass through the loop, the current value in ABC is stored in whatever temporary variable we declare inside the enhanced for loop. That's what we're doing instead of indexing. Now, if you want, you can break out of the loop to quit early. So here you can see we've got a little searching code chunk where we, uh, we want to set some Boolean variable found equal to true as soon as we've found a match for some element x. So if we find it, if uh, the current element is equal to x, we'll break out after setting found equal to true, and then we can print our result, whether it was found or not found. So hopefully by now you're convinced enhanced for loops are definitely easier to write than a standard for loop with an index and all of that. It's less error prone because you're not going to make a mistake with, uh, you know, your bounds or anything like that. But you can't use an enhanced for loop to do a bunch of things. You can't move through an array backward. Uh, you can't do anything that requires you to assign something to a particular position in an array because, again, we've got no counter. We've, not, we've got no control over the positions can't track indices, and you can't access any element in the array other than the current one on each pass. If you want to do any of these things, or if you want to work with a partially filled array, you know, where the logical size is different from the physical size, you really want to use a traditional indexed for loop. But if you know you're going to do the same thing to every element in the array, you don't need any control over the index, and you don't need any control over which direction you iterate through the for loop in, well, then an enhanced for loop is probably uh, the best bet for you. Before we close up shop, the big things for today, make sure you can translate between enhanced for loops and regular for loops with great ease, and make sure you can explain why an enhanced for loop is nice, what benefits it has, but also what problems, what challenges it presents, and when you might decide to use an enhanced for loop as opposed to a regular for loop. That's it for today.